Hey, VV Nation, today is Memorial Day, and hopefully you've had an opportunity to sit back and remember those people who gave their lives for this country. Folks, I am a proud veteran of the United States Marine Corps, and I do it again in a heartbeat. Always remember, all gave some, but some gave all. Normally, we have a 6 p.m. video, but this week, we're going to give you a treat. We're going to give you a video from the Tampa two-day event uh, entitled The Secret of Buying Low and Selling High, done by Jerry D'Ambrosio. So for that, folks, enjoy. Welcome back. Great to see a lot of you folks here. It's been a rough couple of years, but we're back. Last time we were here, I think it was 2020. It was right before everything started. So it was uh, um, glad we were able to come back in 2020. My name is Jerry D'Ambrosio. Um, I'm the manager of educational content with VectorVest. Been with the company now 16 years. Uh, part of, a big part of my responsibilities every day is uh, with the swing trading, I, I call them faction. We have different factions of our education team. Swing trading, retirement options, successful investor type of, of an approach. So a big part of what I do is teach a lot of our swing trading courses, trade like a pro, precision swing trading. Um, so I'm happy to be here today. Um, the next talk we're going we're gonna to go through here today is the secret to buying low and selling high. I have great news for you guys. You guys ready? The secret is to buy low and sell high. <laughs> we're good? Who's up next? Yeah. Guys, that's it. Secret is to buy low and sell high. Uh, of course, there's a little more to it. Uh, but if you get this right, if you get this part right, coupled with what David just went through, you know, the VectorVest system of analyzing stocks, it's not just about stock analysis. It's about uh, understanding market direction. Uh, you're being, you, you, you'll increase the probability of making money year after year if you just keep yourselves on the right side of the market. And look, nothing is 100%, right? Nothing, no signal out there, no indicator is going to produce 100% 100, uh, 100 profitable signals. We have to increase our odds and we have to make sure that we're buying stocks that are in tune with what the market's doing. So VectorVest believes in buying rising stocks in rising markets, in rising industry groups and sectors, by the way, and selling falling stocks in falling markets. So a little different than what you might listen to on television, right? Um, I don't really pay much attention to, to the talking heads much anymore um, because they're always telling you to buy something. 2021, that's all they kept doing. And if you would have done that and just continued to buy stocks in falling markets, um, you know, you, you wind up in some, some uh, pretty deep waters. Um, we take a different approach. We're trend followers. We're not market predictors. We're trend followers. And I, I really hope everybody here believes that markets behave in trends. Now, not, not always, um, but for the most part, there are, there are shorter term trends. There are longer term trends. I know the last couple of days, what's the matter, guys? Last couple, of, uh, last couple of months or so have been pretty difficult, but uh, for the most part, markets do behave in trends, and what we want to do is uh, uh, keep ourselves on the right side. The essence of making money in the stock market is the fine art of buying low and selling high, and it is an art form. It's not a science, okay? It is an art form that takes time to master. Um, you're going to get better at this, as you, go, as you go along. I started with VectorVest 16 years ago. Uh, I was an English major in college. I was a high school English teacher for a couple of years until I moved down to Charlotte. I didn't know anything about the stock market back then, but everything that I've learned over the last 16 years uh, has been kind of uh, through the VectorVest lens of buying uh, safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price in rising markets. And it takes time. Don't think it's gonna happen overnight. But you're going you're gonna to have a basic understanding here today uh, that's just going to help you guys get better and better uh, as the months and years go by. So how do we know when a stock's price is low? Anyone ha have the answer? How do we know when a stock's price is low? Well, what is low to a buyer is high to a seller and vice versa. So who's right? Who's right? Well, by definition, a stock price is low when it is more likely to go up than it is to go down. And that's the key word there, likely. Okay? How do we establish the likelihood that a stock will go up over time? How do we establish the likelihood that a stock will go up in the short term? 
There are a lot of different technical indicators that one can use. RSI, uh, moving averages, support, resistance, things like that. But for the long term, how do we establish that a stock is more likely to go up than it is to go down? Okay. Fundamental investors who hold for the long term, they buy stocks when they see attractive situations regarding value and safety. So a fundamental investor looks at indicators like earnings growth, earnings per share. They look at volume, uh, sales volume, right? How long the company's been in business is a, is a big factor in, uh, in safety. But in essence, earnings coupled with earnings growth create value and safety. Value goes up when earnings go up. If you've seen this slide, I know a hundred times before. Inflation goes down and interest rates go down. Okay? We do, we, we've done this talk a number of times. We've touched on this slide and this point a number of times over the years, and it's never been more relevant than it is now. Because what are we starting to see with earnings? They're struggling a little bit, right? Companies are starting, and it's, and it's just starting to hit uh, uh, companies more so recently than in the past. And it's, it's never a one-to-one -one ratio. You know, inflation doesn't tick higher and earnings ticks lower. In a high inflationary and high in interest rate environment, uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult for companies to grow their earnings because money is more expensive to borrow. Um, individual investors, when, it, when you're in a high inflationary environment, uh, tend to be a little tight with the wallet and not spend a lot of money. What does that do for a company's bottom line? That, of course, uh, hurts it. Ron, if you, want, if you don't mind, go into the program and go into the market climate graph. Okay. And right away, first off, let's, put, uh, let's open up the graph control panel. And let's add a couple of indicators. Right now, the indicators that we have on the chart, 50-day MA EPS. That is a 50-day moving average of the S&P 500 earnings per share. You guys know that our earnings per share is a little bit different than what companies report. Our earnings per share is a leading 12-month earnings forecast. So basically what we're saying is if you see an earnings per share, for example, of $4.50, we feel that a year from now the company is likely to earn $4.50. So it is a leading 12-month indicator. The indicator at the bottom there is the earnings trend indicator. Okay, that indicator is on a zero to two scale. You guys know what that means, right? Above one is considered good or favorable. Below one is considered unfavorable. So the ETI is the earnings trend indicator of the S&P 500 earnings per share. What has the earnings trend indicator been doing over the last several months? Uh, uh, fallen like a rock there. And it's very close to crossing below one. What's starting to happen, and, and let's take a look at that data point right there. What data point was that? The, the peak of earnings per share, that was July, five months ago, six months ago. Inflation's, inflation's been going up for a lot longer than that, right? Interest rates have been rising for a little bit longer than the last six months. So what's starting to happen recently is that the high inflationary and high interest rate environment are taking its toll, which they most times do, to a company's earnings per share, okay? And the flattening out here and the, uh, the, the, the lack of acceleration of earnings per share is, causing, is causing the earnings trend indicator to fall. Ron, do me a favor. Go to uh, add parameter. Um, go to click on CPI, consumer price index. Check that box. We know that it was at 9% not too long ago. It's fallen nicely, thank goodness. Um, high, you know, uh, higher rates are hope, uh, hopefully are having an effect and, and uh, um, you know, bringing down that CPI number. Go back to add parameter. We're going to add a couple more. T-bills and T-notes. T-bills are the uh, uh, short-term rates. T-notes are the long-term rates. Check both of those boxes. Yeah, see that? Okay, just take off T-notes. I've got to check that. That's a data error there. Um, but here are the T-bills currently, well, I'm sorry, currently at about, what, four, four and change. Back then it was at two. 
2%. We're at almost 4.5% here. Look at, what's hap what's, look at what's beginning to happen now. Interest rates are rising, and we're looking at the last, what, year, two, almost two years? Interest rates are rising. Inflation has been rising. Earnings per share continue to go up. Right? But now, and again, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, now this type of environment that we're in really having a, a, um, an, an effect and an impact on earnings per share. What, what happens when the earnings trend indicator goes below one? Bear market, a bear market in, in terms of how we determine bull and bear markets. Uh, you've heard a lot of the, the, the term bear market for, before and we're in a bear market or we were in a bear market in 2021. Um, when you hear that on TV or, or some other places, they're just looking at the, the value of the S&P, right, or the value of the market. Is it 20% lower off of its high? Then you're considered in, in a bear market, okay? We look at things a little differently because we don't just look at the S&P price or the VBC price. We look at earnings, we look at inflation, we look at interest rates, and the combination of those things help us determine whether we are in bull or bear market scenarios. And earnings really is kind of the key there. Earnings uh, ETI above one, bull market, earnings uh, ETI below one, bear market. So we're kind of heading into that, in, in that direction here uh, pretty soon. How do you guys think 2023 is gonna be? How do you think S&P earnings are gonna be in 2023? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs down, a lot of thumbs down, folks joining, joining at home. Uh, a lot of thumbs down. Um, Interest rates are going to continue to go up next year, you know, uh, uh, at least a little, this year. That's right. That's the first time I've done that. We were talking the other day. I, I, wrote, 2000, I wrote a check or two, and I wrote something, uh, the date, and I wrote 2023. And I never do that. I always write the year before. And now I just said last year or this year. Anyway, um, so we'll see. 2023, big year. We can make money in in any market, guys, we just have to remember to keep ourselves on the right side, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, it'll help you guys do here today. Okay, let's get back into the slides, Ron. So let's talk a little bit about safety. Safety improves with outstanding financial performance. Companies that do a good job, a great job, of growing their earnings every quarter, every year. Earnings per share, earnings growth, consistently and predictably beating expectations and forecasts. Above average earnings growth, what's the average that everybody kind of looks at? S&P average, right? So you want companies to grow their earnings faster than the average S&P 500 stocks. So that's what we can look for. And if, if companies do that, their safety will improve their RS rating, right? Because RS is our indicator of safety, one of them. Uh, I, I think you can uh, say that comfort index is as, as well. But we want companies, and again, safety improves with above average earnings growth. Steady increases in stock prices, right? The, 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 the steadier and more consistent a stock price grows, the safer that investment is for the long term. Low debt to equity ratio, high sales volume. So companies like Apple, you know, look, I can name a, a handful of companies in the last year, they've, their stock prices have been getting hammered. But Apple's, Microsoft's, uh, Merck, Johnson & Johnson, these are big companies with uh, profitable products, right, and really, really high sales volume that help them weather storms like we've seen over the last year or so a little bit better than some other companies, right? So you want companies with high sales volume, low debt to equity ratio, consistent steady increases in price, consistent predictable earnings, uh, and outstanding financial performance. And by the way, I'm talking about what fundamental investors look for, right? You know, I mentioned the different, uh, I call them factions, uh, of our education team. We have a retirement department that Jim heads up, we have swing trading, we have options, we have successful investors. And we want you folks to take everything that you can away from this course, but we also want you to um, be a well-rounded investor where, hey, you know, you got your, I manage my retirement, I self-direct a few bucks in my 401k and I manage a portfolio, a retirement portfolio, a lot different than I manage my swing trading portfolio. I've said this in our swing trading coaching groups a number of times. Um, we want you guys to get there. We want you to manage different portfolios. 
We want you to have a retirement portfolio where you buy high RS stocks and the, the management of, the, of those stocks is going to be different. You're going to hold on to them for the long term. You want to make sure that all of these things continue to be in place. And then you have a portion of your portfolio where you might trade a little bit more actively. You might set aside some more money to trade options. We want you guys to get there if you're not there yet. Because, you know, I talked to Jim a little earlier and, and I asked him, what, do you, what, do you, what have you guys been doing in the retirement group last year? He's like, we weren't buying much of anything. We were buying a lot of protective puts because for the most part, uh, part we were in a confirmed down situation for most of 2021. So in times where you are less active in a, in a safer, more conservative portfolio, you can be a little bit more active in a swing trading uh, portfolio by buying and, uh, buying and selling or, or shorting stocks when the market falls. Our swing trading coaching group portfolio last year from September of 21 to September of 22 made 25%. And I think 70% of the time we were short. So again, we want you to get there, you know, and there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, staying in cash or, or reducing your exposure during those confirmed down situations in your conservative portfolio. Um, but again, during those, those uh, volatile times, I think there is an opportunity to make money if you're a swing trader. But we are talking about value investors right now. Technical investors or shorter term traders, other, otherwise known as swing traders, they time their purchases when they expect price to go up. I'm going to add a little something to this. They time their purchases when they see more attractive situations between or with price and volume. Okay, volume is a big part of, of technical trading as well. Um, and one of the things that I try to focus on uh, when teaching swing trading techniques, you know, I'll, I'll create some scans for some, for some um, uh, courses like Trade Like a Pro or I'll teach a, uh, some different techniques, but I'm always trying to layer in fundamentals. Because even though you're trading a technical pattern, I want good companies. I want to trade, swing trade good companies, okay, for the most part. There are times where, look, you know, uh, earnings might not be as favorable or uh, the safety, ratings might be, safety rating might be a little lower. But I'm only in the stock for the short term. Um, but I am trying to focus on valuation as much as, hey, what, what is the technicals telling me? What type, type of technical setup is this? Is it a support retracement? Well, how's the fundamentals? I put on earnings per share. Question I get a lot is, you know, in, in our coaching group, we, I, I, I might queue up a couple of trades for, for, for me to take or for the members to maybe uh, consider, depending on the market. I always got the question, hey, earnings are a week from now. Would you still take the trade? I said, that's a good question. What I'll do is I'll put on earnings per share on the chart. Say, let's, let's take a look at the chart. We like the setup as of the hard right edge. It might be breaking out of a channel or retracing from support, whatever the case may be on a technical perspective. But hey, how's the company's earnings, right? Is it erratic? Does it go from upper right to bottom left um, or bottom left to upper right? And what I'll say is, if it goes from bottom left to upper right, what is that telling you about recent earnings reports? They've been pretty good, right? They've done a good job of of growing their earnings. So I, I, would, uh, I wouldn't shy away from taking a, a shorter term trade on a fundamentally sound company that, have, that has done a good job of growing their earnings with solid earnings per share. If I like a technical setup, but I see erratic earnings per share, I'll pass, especially if they are reporting earnings in a week, right? Because look, they've missed a few times in the past, you know, especially now likely to miss again. Um, I'll pass on that stock and move on. So big part of, of, of your swing trading stock selection is, is layering in those fundamentals, okay? So some key indicators of an imminent price increase include a breakout, a breakout on high volume. Breakouts on low volume aren't as attractive for swing traders. You know, I, I always kind of take this from David Paul, and, and as you can see, it says here, increasing volume. Increasing volume, rising price, bullish. Rising price, decreasing volume, not bullish. There's no conviction there, right? There's no conviction there. Falling price, rising volume, bearish. Falling price, volume drying up a little bit, let's maybe look for a, a potential reversal because there are less and less sellers here, right? Especially at key support levels. Um, so again, imminent price increases include a breakout. You can, you can look at breakouts, uh, um, uh, above resistance, breakouts out of a channel. 
an uptrend? How do we determine uptrend? How do we determine uptrend? How are different, uh, different indicators or ways? Higher highs, higher lows, if you're just looking at price, higher highs and higher lows. Uh, moving averages, upsloping moving averages. Now, trend does, de does depend on time frame because uh, uh, a short-term uptrend may not necessarily mean that the stock is in a long-term uptrend. So different types of moving averages, long-term moving average, 200-day moving average, short-term moving average, 20-day moving average or less. So we want to take a look at all trends. I always, no matter uh, the, the, the technical setup that I'm trading, I always look at the long-term trend of the stock. Why? That, that gives me a higher probability that the pullback that I'm looking at or the, or the technical setup that I'm considering trading is likely to going to lead to a profitable trade because the long-term trend is up. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Uh, news. Okay. Uh, earnings. Clinical trials. FDA approvals, things like that. So we always want to check the news uh, before we buy anything. VectorVest is the only service, and David uh, talked about this earlier, that combines the power of fundamental valuation with the insight or insights of technical analysis. That's our VST indicator, value, safety, and timing. Okay. So our mantra is that we advocate that investors buy safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price. The question becomes, are they right for you? So let's hop into the program. I'll just read the next slide. High RS stocks usually are classified as prudent or conservative, and they have been proven to go up over time. So let's look at those high RS stocks in the VectorVest database. So we go to viewers. And if we resort the list, instead of VST, we look at relative safety. And a few of the same stocks might appear at the top of the list. But out of the 9,000 plus stocks that we track, and we talked about safety, we talked about relative safety, and the indicators that uh, go into relative safety, these are the stocks at the top that have, the best, uh, 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 have, that have done the best in growing their earnings consistently and predictably over time. So let's graph the top bunch. We don't have to graph uh, any more than the top 10 is fine. Yeah, one has a, okay, that's a good point. Let's minimize that chart for a second. <laughs> Would you buy that stock today? Would you buy any stock today? No, right? Um, go to the homepage real quick. What is our guidance telling us? Our guidance says that we advocate caution when buying stocks. Big day today, look at that. Look at that, Jim. Dow's up 500 points, NASDAQ up 200, S&P, good data today. There was good jobs numbers today, unemployment, unemployment rate down, payroll up. Um, that's unusual, right? Good news is your, usually bad news. Bad news is good news. Sometimes good news is good news, though. Um, we got a green light in the price column of the color guard. We got the primary wave up. MTI, is that above one? 1.0. 1. So it's right at one. All right, maybe we're starting to move in the right direction. Maybe we're starting to move in the right direction. Um, Got to be a little bit careful here because we're still in a confirmed down. I always like to take a look at the market every time I'm up here. So just to give you guys an, uh, an idea of what the market's doing today. Um, go back to the viewers. Yes. So sell rating. Why does the stock have a sell rating? Why is it? Well, it's a, it's a high RS stock. It's also got a VST of above one point, above, above one. It's got a good relative value rating as well, 1.22. By the way, David talked about relative value, didn't he? And he talked about how it's one of the most important indicators in VectorVest. It looks at future price appreciation potential. And some of the things that we will consider with relative value, interest rates and inflation, right? So did you guys know that the average RV in the VectorVest composite has fallen quite considerably over the last six months to nine months? Why do you think that is? Why has the, why has the long-term price appreciation of the market suffered over the last six to nine months? Interest, interest rates. rates and inflation, right? The higher interest rates go, the higher inflation goes. That has a, 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 a negative effect on future price performance. So I thought that was interesting that the average RV of the VVC, and you could plot that on, on the graph. If, uh, Ron, if you just go to graphs, 
uh, yeah, change it to stock and type in the VVC. So if you go to a market timing graph, which I will in a second, you can't plot RV on the chart. You can plot our market timing indicators on the chart, but you can't plot RV. Let's clean this up, please. Take off everything and just put RV on. Here's the vector best composite. And I think we're looking at a weekly chart, end of week, just go to a one year, there we go. And put RV on the chart. You can see how the average RV over the last nine months has fallen quite a bit. And that has everything to do with, again, um, valuations being lowered, interest rates, and inflation rising. Okay, so I don't know if you guys knew that, that you can put our proprietary indicators on the market by looking at the VVC of a, on a, of a stock, uh, looking at a stock graph of the VVC as opposed to a market timing graph. All right, so let's go back to the stock viewer. And the reason why that top RS stock has a, has a sell rating is because the price of the stock is below its stop price, okay? But let's graph them. There's a couple sell ratings in there. There's a few holds. Look, what's the buy to sell ratio? It's below one, right? So there are more sells than buys anyway. Let's look at a five-year chart, weekly. That's okay. <laughs> weekly, yep, weekly. weekly five years, that's okay. All right, take off RV and put uh, earnings per share on. United, okay, it's a high RS stock for a reason. Because over the last five years, look at earnings per share over the last five years. Bottom left to upper right. Right now, under a little bit of pressure. But they've done a pretty good job, haven't they, over the last year. Look at the price performance over the last year. A little different than what the market's done, right? Why is that? Well, they've done an outstanding job of, through it all, continuing to grow their earnings each and every quarter and each and every, every year here, particularly over the last year or two, when a lot of other companies have struggled and the markets uh, have been under a lot of pressure. So we'll go through a couple of these, and you'll see the same thing here. High RS stocks, what's the common denominator? Earnings per share that go from bottom left to upper right. Again, we're looking long term here. High RS stocks, you're a fundamental investor or you're managing a more conservative portfolio and fundamental indicators and fundamental valuation is kind of key to your stock selection, right? So here with CI, Cigna, another healthcare company, fantastic earnings per share. Let's go to the next one. Progressive insurance company, little, little, uh, they struggled here, but they've rallied nicely. It does look like we are higher than, uh, than the peak, but look at that uh, weekly performance there. So, Conservative investors or prudent investors, because RS is, ca is uh, classified as a, either a prudent or conservative indicator. You, you want to hold stocks for the long term. You want to manage a more conservative portfolio. You want to favor high RS stocks whose earnings per share performance looks like that over the last five years. Okay, let's close out of that. Let's get back into the slides. Okay, so what's the secret weapon? The secret weapon is market direction. Quote from Dr. Delito, it's a long time ago I remember him, him writing this in the views. The single most important thing to know is whether the market is going up or down, everything follows from that. Well, what's everything? Everything is how you manage your portfolio and how you pick stocks for your portfolio. Everything follows what the market's doing. So, we are trend followers, so we're gonna let the trend be your friend. Buy rising stocks in rising markets, sell falling stocks in falling markets. This is the tough part, I know, because we tend to fall in love or uh, think very highly of the stocks that we buy and we don't believe that they're gonna fall. But you wanna uh, separate that from your everyday process and uh, trade stocks that are going with the market. Short falling stocks in falling markets. Buy contra ETFs, inverse ETFs in falling markets. Don't continue to buy stocks in a falling market. Let's go to a market timing graph. So the market timing signals, they never fail to signal uh, us, particularly the confirmed calls, never fail to signal a major market move. Is it 100%? Will it always, well, first off, will it always signal a major market move? Yes, it always will. Okay, there are some times where you're going to get whipsawed. Let's go move from a VVC chart to the market timing graph. Okay, let's click. Oh, somebody asked me about the DEW. Uh, I'll, I'll get there in a second. Let's change our uh, uh, graph layout 
to the VectorVest layout. I'll get to the DEW in a moment. It's a, it's a fantastic market timing signal. Okay. Price of the VVC at the top, there's the MTI buy to sell ratio and the RT indicator. And we'll put the confirm calls on for a moment. So this is the last one year. And back, back us up a little bit more, Ron, to give us that confirm down that was in November of, of 21. So this is, this is really interesting. Since the November of 2021 high, there only has been one confirmed up signal that you should have reacted to. Okay, why not this one? Do you guys remember we talked a lot about this confirmed up here and that was this, this was in July, this was in what, March or May? March, why, why if you were managing a conservative portfolio, did you not or should you, or you uh, sh uh, did not react to that signal? No follow through, right, no follow through. Not even, not, not only the next day did you not get follow through, but there was no day after that did the market move any higher than when we signaled that confirmed uh, up situation? So little, little fake out signal there. No, no opportunity or, or, or uh, instance where you should have taken positions, re-entered your conservative portfolio during that confirmed up situation. This one, I'll give you, you know, it, don't, it didn't last very long, but there was follow through, okay? So over the last one year, in your retirement or conservative portfolios, pretty inactive. I know Jim says that, you know, that he does a lot of uh, protective put buying in, uh, in his retirement coaching group portfolio, but not a lot of stock buying. He didn't do a lot of stock buying or any stock buying, excuse me, during confirmed down situations. Now, if you're a trader, here's, here's a, kind of the rub here. You're taking advantage of these rallies, okay? You're seeing these attractive situations with price. What do I mean by an attractive situation? Uh, an inverse head and shoulders pattern, a support retracement, a bearish, I'm sorry, a bullish divergence between the VVC and relative timing. For example, right here, take off the confirm call, Ron. So here's the market from this point and take off the MTI, take off the body sell ratio too, please. So you're in a confirmed down, you're in a confirmed down, but here you see the market basing a little bit, right? It's looking for a bottom right, here, right in this area. Look at the relative timing indicator. I did a special presentation a couple weeks ago on recognizing bullish and bearish divergences. As a trader, if you see the market falling and you know, kind of leveling out at a support level, but an indicator like relative timing, creating a higher low, if you're a trader, you're pouncing. You're getting ready to start buying stocks again. As an investor, thank you, Ron. Ron's drawing those lines there that, that are connecting the, the higher lows on RT and the lower lows of price. When did the confirm call uh, turn up? Not for a few weeks or a month or so later. Okay, so you have to understand what type of portfolio you're managing and the indicators and the, the, the timing signals that you use will vary, okay? Um, so the confirmed calls will never miss a major market move. It can't. It can't miss a major market move because the market on a confirmed up, would you really consider this a major market move? I wouldn't, okay? Um, that was a major down move off of the November high was a major down move. You know, we're kind of in the middle here of, of a potential uh, another leg lower, okay, because we're in a confirmed down situation right now, but it can't miss a major market move because if the market goes up for a couple of weeks, take off RT, put the buy to sell, ra uh, uh, put the buy -to -sell ratio on. More stocks are getting buy ratings. Market goes up for two weeks. There's your confirmed up situation. So more and more participation, more and more stocks are in uptrends with the market rising. That's a really solid signal. Again, it's not going to fail or miss a major market move. We have other market timing signals in the program, all right? Primary wave, that's on the home page. You can also load the primary wave. Everybody, everybody ready? Put the primary wave on. Obviously that puts a lot more signals on the chart. So, you know, for a conservative investor, that might be a little bit 
uh, daunting or scary to see so many signals on, but if you're a trader, you really want to pay attention to the primary wave. You really want to pay attention to the primary wave. If you, if you listen to our daily color guard reports, you'll, you'll always recognize that we will say to buy stocks in, at some level or another when the primary wave is up. When the primary wave is down, we'll say not to buy stocks. So our guidance really on the homepage and whether we're saying to buy stocks or not has everything to do with the position of the primary wave. It's the short term market trend. We have other signals a little bit faster. So let's do this. Um, zoom in to, the, to, the, to this recent kind of, uh, yeah, right there, all the way, that's fine. So here when we recognize that bullish divergence in this area, you saw the primary wave turn up a couple of times. Now after the primary wave, the green light will appear in the color guard. Couple, we've gotten a couple of green lights over the last few days. So if Ron puts the green lights on, green light buyer, this just simply means that not only has the market gone up week over week, but day over day as well. And you can see as the market rises, more and more green lights start to appear in the color guard. And those are opportunities to buy. What, what I'm showing you guys here are explicit signals, right? These are rules, rules based signals. They're not, it's, it has nothing to do with guesswork. I think everybody needs that a little bit more nowadays, right? They need more uh, explicit signals based on rules as opposed to just, hey, the market's going up here. Let me just start buying stocks again. Okay, so there's the green light. We got another one, one of my favorites, the GLBRT kicker. This one has, and then change the layout, Ron, to the uh, GLBRT kicker. This signal requires a little bit more than the market going up day over day and week over week. What we've done is we've applied two moving averages to relative timing. RT, we know what RT is, right? RT, we know what RT means for an individual stock. It means it looks at the short-term price trend of a stock. Well, here we look at the short-term price trend of the market. RT can be a little noisy. So what we did here was we applied two moving averages to relative timing. Moving averages help quiet the noise and they help identify true direction. You know, we're, we're, we're uh, used to moving averages on price. Great, you can put moving averages on anything. If you want to identify the true direction of something, which is a little hard to do with the naked eye, you apply moving averages to it. So along with the, with the green light and the price column of the color guard, if momentum begins to build and the short term moving average crosses above the longer term moving average, and it's a 10 and a 15, by the way, and if Ron opens up the graph control panel, you'll see that down at the bottom. It's a 10, 10 period and, and a 15 period EMA, I'm sorry, simple moving average on relative timing. 10 period moving average crosses above the 15, green lights in the price column of the color guard, you got a green light uh, uh, RT kicker signal. No, and the down signal, by the way, is a confirmed down. Bless you. Confirmed down. Yellow lights here are basically any other situation. A yellow light in the price column of the color guard could be a green light in the price column of the color guard, but the 10 period moving average on RT is below the 15. Then, and so the confirmed down is your, is your down signal. One of my favorite signals because, uh, you know, I, I like to swing trade and I like to play the market up and down. And you don't necessarily have an opportunity or when you're using the GLBRT kicker, if the confirmed down is your only down signal, all right, that down signal, that down situation could last a while. With that signal, there's, there's not necessarily short signals, shorting signals, bearish signals, right? There's just one and it's a confirmed down. With the GLB, uh, with the RT kicker combo, I love this, uh, this timing model because now you have down signals during down markets, right? So we want to buy rising stocks in rising markets, sell or short falling stocks in falling markets. I think this, R this, this signal here, uh, RT kicker combo, does a really good job of identifying um, um, building upward momentum and also building falling momentum, down momentum. And then finally, somebody was asking me about the DEW. Okay, and let's change the layout to the pro trader. You don't have to do the enhance, just the pro trader. And just go to a one year chart. So here is a little bit more of a, a technical look at the market because here we're looking at envelopes. Those blue lines above and below price are envelopes. They just keep price in a normal trading range. 
30-day weighted moving average in white and the DPO. And if we put the, up, oh, Ron did it, put the DEW signals on. The DEW will generally, not always, generally turn up before the confirmed up. So here is your sequence of signals. You get the primary wave up, and this is particularly off of a bottom, but, but really off of any, any low point. Um, primary wave turns up. That's your first indication of a trend change. Green light in the price column of the color guard. GLB RT kicker. DEW confirm call. Those generally are the sequence of signals that you will get. So if you're a little bit more aggressive, you're willing to take on a little bit more risk earlier. If you're more conservative, you're going to wait for something like the DEW or the confirm calls to re-enter back into the market. Okay, so again, guys, these are, clear, these are explicit signals. These are, this is not based on any guesswork. Um, and mastering this does take time. I said that earlier. All right, it does take time and it does take some work. You guys are all here, which is fantastic. You really want to you want to kind of improve yourselves next year. Um, so, you know, watch the daily color guard reports every day. Who does that? Who does that? Not nearly enough hands. Not ne <laughs> Glenn, you do? Glenn, Glenn watches them every day. Not nearly enough hands. Guys, please watch those daily color guard reports every single evening. It takes 10 minutes maybe. And if you do that, it's just like studying. If you study, you'll improve. You'll get smarter. You'll get better. So you have to just watch those color guard reports, and particularly on Fridays, keeping yourselves on the right side of the market. If we see a bullish divergence, we'll point it out to you. Any market timing signal change, you need to know about it, right? Because you have to know how to manage you know, the portfolios that you're managing. Okay, let's get back into the slides. All right, so again, the, market, the vector S market timing graph clearly shows when the market's rising or falling. We're just looking at the VVC. The VVC is the, the foundation of our entire market analysis. Everything starts with the vector S composite. And it gives you explicit market timing signals. The market timing graph is your key to success. Follow the signal that best fits your investment style. I know it says that best fits your investment style, but follow the signal that is suitable or, or that it makes sense for the portfolio that you're managing. I'll go back to, hey, let's manage different portfolios. Let's be well-rounded. Swing trading, options, retirement, you know, more of a successful investor. And that's why in all of our coaching groups, we manage different portfolios because we know, hey, if you're a swing, trading, a swing trader, there's a different types of, of stock selection that you're using and money management that you're using to manage those positions. It ha you, don't put swing trading or short-term stocks in with your long-term investments. Kind of muddies the water a little bit, you might get confused. <laughs> Allocate the money differently and manage the conservative portfolio using a signal like the DEW with a confirm call. Manage your swing trading portfolio, maybe using the RT kicker combo because you're buying stocks when the market's uh, rising and shorting or buying contra ETFs when, when it's falling. Okay? All right, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to bring Ray. Ray's going to come up before Glenn. Thank you, folks. Hey, VV Nation, did you know that there are seven deadly sins that can keep you from consistently making money in the market? If you would like to know more about those sins and if you are falling victim to any of them, he goes right now to www.vectorvest.com forward slash YT seven sins to get your free report. You don't want to miss out on this. So do that right now.